My name is Councillor Mike Cohen. I'm here with Councillor Alan J. Levine and, and members of Council. It's, it's a real honour to, to be at this historic event and once again Rabbi Shoem has come through and he got us good weather. I know he had something to do with this. Uh, it's, really, it's really hard to believe that it's been uh, over a year now since Rabbi Shoham left us. And you know, when I, when I came here this morning and, and arrived and started talking to people, I actually looked around to see where is he because it still not, doesn't seem natural to be at Beth Zion without Rabbi Shoham. He was, as I told his family many times, a true legend. He's somebody that I uh, was privileged to know from the time I was able to talk. Uh, you know, I grew up at Death Zion, going to Hebrew, the Hebrew day school here, um, having my bar mitzvah, and I don't think a day or a week uh, or a month went by in my lifetime where I didn't have some kind of connection to him. Every time I turned around, there was Rabbi Shoham, whether he was at the Cavendish Mall, he was at my sports celebrity breakfast, he'd show up at our golf tournament, and at my concert where we supported uh, uh, Katz and uh, Joseph Milo did his annual concert, and there was Rabbi Shoham, and of course we all know the night before he passed away, he was right here at the Cantorial concert. So uh, today is a very exciting and historic day, and I know that uh, that he would be very, very proud. I remember even during the high holidays uh, when I'd be uh, going uh, through the, uh, the sanctuary, through the uh, synagogue, and Rabbi Shon would be going uh, from one sanctuary to the other. He'd always stop and talk to me, and at one point, as he shook hands walking up and down the stairs, I said to him, and this was long before I was a counselor, I said, Rabbi Shoham, have you ever thought of running for mayor? And he stopped, he walked back to me, and he said, you know, Michael, uh, many people have asked me to do that, but where would I find the time? <laughs> but I think he would have gotten a lot of our votes. Alan? Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, you know, uh, my name is uh, Councillor Alan J. Levine. I've been uh, the city councillor here for some 30 years, but my family, uh, we date back to way back in 1956, just a year after Rabbi Shoham arrived, and uh, he was family and he was friends. My wife, Rhoda, and my late uh, sister-in-law, Phyllis Oliver Shulam, used to come to the park here and watch Rabbi Shoham playing baseball. And there were scouts here. That's right, there were scouts, like Jewel Namer, right? Eh? <laughs> she was a scout. I don't know which for which team, but uh, she was out here scouting. <laughs> and uh, Rabbi Shoham, was, he was just the best. He was the leader. He, he was everything. And he had, he had help. He had great presidents. You know, Dr. Rosenberg, he had uh, Jack, remember Jack? Jack is, never gave up the presidency, Jack. He still thinks he's president. And uh, <laughs> we, we, have, we had lots of important, helpful people for him. Uh, you know, uh, you have Joe Presser. I have to mention Joe Presser because, you know, he's still walking around like he lost his best friend, because he did. And, uh, you know, great people helped build this place, but Rabbi Shoham, he, he, just, he just really was the best. You know, I can recall back, uh, we were at Mayor Lang's funeral, and, uh, and I said to him, I said, you and uh, Bernie, uh, you know, you not always sing eye to eye. He says, you know, Alan, he says, in life you have two choices. You can close doors, and you can build bridges. He says, I'm a bridge builder, and he sure was. And we'll always remember him as being one of the great bridge builders of all time. And, uh, I, you know, uh, he was a community leader, activist, friend to everyone I met. We will miss him dearly. Today I'm so very proud to be introducing a new street name in this district. And uh, Rabbi Emeritus Shoham, Sidney Shoham, his name will be endeared on the street, on the building, and in our hearts forever. Uh, thank you, Alan. It was uh, about, I think, last winter when Earl Rubin uh, uh, called me and asked me if, uh, what do I think about the possibility of renaming this street after Rabbi Shoham? And uh, the fact that there was only one civic address, it made perfect sense. And uh, I immediately went to Alan and Mayor Brownstein and the rest of council, and it was agreed to in seconds. Uh, and I want to thank uh, our staff. I want to thank Daryl Levine, uh, our public affairs director over here, who's very involved behind the scenes in, in making this happen because something like this doesn't happen overnight. This is historic. Uh, as I told his family, 
10, 20, 50, 100, 200 years from now, this will always be Sidney Shoham Place, and people will, will not ask who was Rabbi Shoham, they will know who Rabbi Shoham was. Right now, I'd like to bring up our mayor, Mayor Mitchell Brownstein, to speak. Thank you, Mike and Alan. Jewel Shoham and family, Rabbi Purton, Earl Rosen, Anthony Housefather, our member of parliament, David Birnbaum, our member of the National Assembly, and all the city councillors, each one of them who was so supportive of this project. You've seen two of them here, but the others that I'd like to mention and thank for this initiative, Ruth Klo Kovac, Glenn Nashen, Stephen Erdely, Sam Goldblum, Sydney ben Isri, and Dita Burku sends her good wishes. She's away at a simcha out of town, but she wanted to make a particular thank you as well to Public Works. That's her portfolio, and she wants to thank them for all the great work they did to bring us to this moment. So today we are recognizing, remembering a very important leader in our community, a pioneer in Côte St. Luke. C'était en 1955 que le rabbin Shoham est venu à Montréal pour visiter son frère Gilbert. Et quand il était ici, il y avait une communauté de personnes, il y avait un groupe de personnes qui ont parlé de la possibilité d'ouvrir une synagogue de l'ouest de l'île de Montréal, sur l'île de Montréal, de ce centre ici à Côte-Saint-Luc. And that is how it happened. They chose Rabbi Shoham and this synagogue was built. But as I've always said, what comes first is it the community, the synagogues, the religious institutions, the educational institutions, or council? What comes first? How do we work together to make things happen and to make a community great? And it's very clear that Rabbi Shoham was a pioneer and what came first in Cote St. Luke was this synagogue. And it was the members in this synagogue who got together and said, we need a swimming pool. And they built Blossom Pool, which was not a city initiative. It was the people building a private pool. And then the council came forward and built another pool because pools were in demand in those days. So we had one to the east and the west. And there was an arena and of course a library that moved to its present location and our aquatic community center. But also lots of commerce came into the city and we see how it's changed. And I look always back to what Rabbi Shoham did. The fact that today our food court is becoming so kosher friendly is a result of those first pioneers. And our city, Cote St. Luke, is known as a place that is tolerant and welcoming of people of all religions and all ethnic backgrounds. But we cannot deny that it is a hub for Jewish life. It is those pioneers surrounded by Rabbi Shoham that created this community that continues to flourish. And it is the seeds that turn into flowers that will continue to grow. And it is why we have a community that is so interested in doing good. Rabbi Shoham not only supported Cote St. Luke, he was involved in B'nai B'rith, he was involved in the Miriam Home, the Miriam Foundation, he was involved in Combined Jewish Appeal and in so many causes for Israel. And you see in Cote St. Luke today, we have a B'nai B'rith House, another one coming, we have Miriam Homes in our community, and we are a community that wants to do good. So I'm very proud to live in this community and I'm very proud today to know that we will be unveiling this plaque and forever remembering Rabbi Shoham, but not only remembering what he did, but what he continues to do and what the, the people who have followed him in our community and continue to do good continue to build a Code St. Luke, a Montreal, a wonderful province in Canada and a world and of course Israel thanks to his leadership. So thank you all, and this will be uh, something we will always treasure deep in our hearts. Thank you. We have a wonderful new mayor. And I will tell you, the next person I'm going to introduce needs no introduction. Former mayor of the city of Cote St. Luke, advocate for Jewish rights, advocate for seniors, He's just been a member of parliament less than a year, and he's done so much already for the city and for the uh, seniors around here. He was responsible for a new drop-in center, not himself, but I will tell you from the work he did, mostly by himself. We're so lucky to have him leading the uh, Jewish caucus in Ottawa, and we know we have a strong representative. We have a great man with a great future and a protector of all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Anthony Housefather. 
Uh, thank you so much to Alan and Mike, and uh, it's wonderful to be here with Mitchell Brownstein, uh, Ruth Kovacs, Sam Goldblum, all of the members of the Code St. Luke City Council, David Birnbaum, our MA, Lawrence Bergman, our former MA, and to Jewel Shoham and the family, to Rabbi Purden, uh, to Oh, Rosen and all the members of the board of Beth Zion. The naming of this road is very, very special. I remember when I was first elected mayor in 2005, and when I'd been doing door to door in that election, I'd gone to Rabbi Shoham's house and he said, you know, after the election, you should really stop by in my office. And I stopped by, and I expected I was going to get what you normally get when you go see a rabbi, a lecture about you know, Judaism and Code St. Luke and how it's so important for the mayor to preserve the Jewish fact of Code St. Luke and all of that. But we didn't talk about that at all. We talked about three things. We talked about the history of Code St. Luke, which he wanted to impart to me. And I thought that was very important because understanding your history is a precursor to the future. He talked about baseball. And we talked about how we would love to get, have the Cote St. Luke Expos come back to Montreal. <laughs> it was just after they left. And we talked about music. And what I think was inspirational about Rabbi Shohem was that he was someone that showed us that Judaism doesn't live in isolation. Yes, we need to be proud of our culture, our community, and celebrate together our festivals and our holidays. And a rabbi shows leadership in that way. But Jews also need to be citizens of the world. And we need to have other interests where we mingle with people who are not from our community and we enjoy sporting events together and arts together and culture together. And that is the type of city that Beth Zion, Rabbi Shohem, and this entire community have developed over the last 60 years. As Mitchell said, we're not only known, in fact, that is not what we're generally known for, that we are a hub of Jewish life. We're known for a library that's inspirational. We're known for now our aquatic and community center. We're known for our EMS. We're known as a city where people are treated with respect and dignity, whatever their race, their religion, their color, their creed, their sexual orientation. And that is what is amazing about Cote St. Luke. And that is the type of city that Rabbi Shoham wanted us to build. And that's why I'm so honored to be here when this street is being inaugurated in his honor. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Anthony. And we would now turn to our member of National Assembly for Darcy McGee, David Birnbaum. Thank you. Bonjour, tout le monde. Mr. Shoham, Mr. le député, Mr. le maire, et ami conseiller de la ville de Côte Saint-Luc, Mr. Bergman. I see before me a very big family, the immediate family, of course, but it's very moving to me to see so many of you here uh, for whom uh, Rabbi Shoham was a family leader, a community leader, of course, but clearly a family leader. Um, I had the pleasure of getting to know Rabbi Shoham and to work with him during my days at the Canadian Jewish Congress, but I know how central he was to so many of your lives. Um, it struck me with a smile and reading a bit about him, and a few, few people have mentioned it, uh, not only his affinity for, but his talent for baseball. As a, a member of that very small fraternity of people who went to the Expo's very first game on April 14th, 1969, <laughs> and their last game in 2003, baseball is a big part of my own heart as well. Um, and I don't know, but my, my guess is that Rabbi Shoham probably batted cleanup. Because when you bat cleanup, you take care of the whole community. You get the job done, you get the big hit, you're usually the leader in the clubhouse. And uh, from my knowledge of Rabbi Shoham, that's who he was. It also doesn't surprise me to learn that he studied and practiced uh, psychology and psychiatry. Uh, that warm, uh, gentle presence, that stirring ability from a podium, and from the Bima, uh, those are skills that are very human skills. And perhaps part of his training fed into that ability to be empathic, to be a voice, to be a leader of a family of this size. So I know what he's meant to all of you um, and to me in the modest uh, time I got to know him. And uh, 
Kolakavat to quote St. Luke to understand that here is a living way to recognize what he's meant to all of us. Um, so when we drive by, when you come each Saturday, uh, you'll be tipping your kippah, you'll be thinking about the rabbi who's meant so much to all of you. Thank you. Merci. It is my distinct pleasure now to introduce to you Rabbi Purton, a friend to the community. He is a friend to every one of the members of his congregation. He is really a wonderful human being. I introduce Rabbi Purton. Thank you. On behalf of Beth Zion Congregation, I'd like to welcome the many dignitaries, rabbis, community leaders who have joined us today. The members of Beth Zion Congregation who are with us, members of the Jewish and non-Jewish community who have come together today to celebrate the legacy of Rabbi Sidney Shoham of blessed memory. Allow me to personally welcome Rebetzin Shoham and the Shoham family, the Honorable Anthony Housefather, the Honorable Dev David Birnbaum, the Honorable Lawrence Bergman, Mayor Mitchell Brownstein, City Councilman Alan Levine, City Councilman Mark Cohen, Consul General Ziv Nevo Coleman could not be here but sent his warm wishes, and Father John Walsh. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Lisa Gershkow, representing herself and Rabbi Mark Fishman, co-chairs of the Montreal Board of Rabbis, Rabbi Ruben Pupko, Rabbi Michael Whitman, Rabbi Michael Wolf, Rabbi David Kadosh, and Rabbi Toledano. I'd like to welcome and recognize the Ross Deitcher family who through their generosity have donated once again an ambulance to Mugen David Adom in Israel in memory of Rabbi Shohem. When we sing the Hallel prayer, we say the words, Ze Hayom Asa Hashem, Nagila v'nismachavo. This is the day made by God. Let us celebrate this occasion. I can think of no greater words to describe the dedication of a street in Cote St. Luke in memory of our beloved rabbi and teacher, Rabbi Sidney Shohem. Zehayom asa Hashem, Nagila v'nismachavo. There are two blessings that we can potentially recite when we hear good news. The first blessing is Hatov Vahametiv, and we say that blessing when it's good news for me and good news for others. The second blessing, however, is a very personal, individual bracha, the blessing of Shehechianu. When we recite the blessing of Shehechianu, it's because I personally have benefited or appreciate a moment in time or something that I have acquired. Today, each and every one of us here are celebrating a deep personal connection with Rabbi Shohem. Rabbi Shohem was more than just a rabbi in the ivory tower, but he was a rabbi who reached the hearts and souls of every individual that he came in contact with and changed people's lives for the better. When Aaron, Moses' brother, passed away, the Torah says that every single Jewish person mourned his passing. It doesn't say that when Moses passed away, every Jew mourned, but it says that when Aaron, Moses' brother, who played a much smaller part in the Torah than Moses, but it says that when he passed away, every Jewish person mourned. And the reason was because Aaron touched the lives of individuals. He was a man of peace, a man of bridge building. He didn't sit in the ivory tower of the priesthood, but got involved, rolled up his sleeves, and touched the lives of the individuals in his community. Rabbi Shom was the same type of a man. A man dedicated to the community at large, all the organizations he was involved in, but on a deep personal level, he touched, like Aaron HaKohen, the lives 
of every single individual who he came in contact with. And this is why today we recite the Shehechiyanu blessing because it's a deeply personal blessing versus the one that is global. Because like Aaron, Rabbi Shalom touched the lives of individuals. Please join me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechiyanu V'Kiyamanu V'Higiyanu Lazman Hazeh Yehi Zichro Baruch May the memory of Rabbi Shohem, Rav Moshe Ziskin, Ben Harav Yechiel Dov be a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. We're going to conclude this ceremony with two parts. The first, I'm going to ask uh, Rabbi Shoham's daughters, Linda, Donna, and Mindy, to please step over here so we can make some room. We're going to unveil first the civic sign, because as of today, this is no longer 5740 Hudson. As of today, this is one Sydney Shoham place. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now just hear from Earl Rosen, the president of the synagogue, and Linda Lieberman, daughter of Rabbi Shoham. To begin, as president of Beth Zion, I want to extend a sincere yashikoach and thank you to Mayor Mitchell Brownstein, Councillors Dita Burko, Alan Levine, and Mike Cohn for all their input, guidance, and assistance. They were always readily available and did whatever was needed for this dream to become a reality. An outstanding job done. I also must give honorable mention to Beatrice Newman and Daryl Levine for all their inside help. I stand before you today with a rush of emotion that is extremely difficult to put into words. After the idea was conceived for the street renaming and address change, time seemed to take forever to arrive at this momentous occasion. We at Beth Zion have had many momentous events take place over the years, coming from the house to the auditorium, then the sanctuary, Torah dedication, the 36th and 50th anniversary celebrations, cantorial concerts, and on and on. To me, one of those impressive milestones was on April 9, 1989, the 4th of Nissan, 5749, Beth Zion unveiled their magnificent Iron Kodesh in our main sanctuary. As I started to write this speech, I wondered how the president speaking at that time felt in having helped achieve such a significant accomplishment. Well, today, September the 25th, 2016, the 22nd of Elu, 5776, 27 years later, I can relate to his experience and feeling firsthand, standing before you being a part of something so significant. Being able to bestow this unveiling and honor to the Shoham family, recognizing the immense influence their husband, father, father-in-law, grandfather, and great-grandfather had on so many individuals in so many multiple ways. I'm extremely proud and honored to be associated on this memorable, memorable day with the city of Cote St. Luke and his Beth Zion Synagogue to preserve the memory forever of our rabbi, Sidney Shoham, Rav Moshe Ziskin ben Rav Yechiel Dov, a blessed memory. Last night we started saying Slicha's prayers leading up to Rosh Hashanah, the new year. What a better way to begin the year with a new street name and a new shul address. From this day forward, when anyone comes to Beth Zion Synagogue, they arrive at our shul, one Plas Sidney Shoham Place, via Plas Sidney Shoham Place. We are truly fortunate to have a devoted and dedicated membership in our shul. From time to time, there are unfortunate circumstances that arise, and our Beth Zion family always respond with care and compassion. One of those families to which I'm referring to is the Rostecher family. This mishpucha are always willing, no hesitation, to be there for our shul with their kindness and generosity. Today I'm honored to announce, as you can all see behind me, through Canadian Mug and Dovet Adam, the Rostecher family has purchased an ambulance dedicated in memory of our beloved rabbi, Sidney Shoham, a blessed memory, to Fagy and si Simon Rostecher, Judith and Harry Rostecher, and their entire families, we as a shul and community salute you, each and every one of you. This gesture is really very touching, remarkable, and so very significant. Thank you, Shana Tova, good health and peace for everyone. Now ask uh, Linda Lieberman to please uh, say a few words on behalf of the family. Linda? What is a name? It is something that you are given at birth and remains with you long after your life on this, this earth is over. 
Rabbi Shimon, in the fourth chapter of Pirkei Avot, says, There are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of kingship. But the crown of a good name surpasses them all. On behalf of my dear mother Jewel, my sisters Mindy and Donna, and our family, I thank the city of Cote St. Luke, the mayor and his counselors, for this overwhelming honor for my father, the late Rabbi Sidney Shoham, Zichorano Livracha. As well, heartfelt thanks to Earl Rosen, here. President of Beth Zion, whose vision and great efforts were so instrumental in making this day happen. My parents had three daughters, but Beth Zion and its entire Cote St. Luke community was my father's baby. From its infancy, Rabbi Shoham nurtured the people of this neighborhood every step of the way. Through milestones of birth, bar mitzvahs, weddings, and death, Rabbi Shoham was there, cradling his constituents with Torah wisdom and insight, in times of joy and in times of sadness. The renaming of Hudson Avenue to Sydney Shoham Place is an extraordinary testimony to the legacy my beloved father left. Rabbi Shoham loved people and was loved right back by so many. This street and the synagogue built on it was his second home. In this truly Sydney Shoham's place. Thank you for recognizing this in such a befitting manner. One of the themes this morning that many of the people who spoke mentioned was how Rabbi Shohem was a bridge builder, a man of shalom, a man of peace. And it's with this in mind I'd like to ask Chazen Yossi Pomerantz to lead us all in Oseh Shalom. Oseh Shalom Im Romav Oseh Shalom Aleinu Ve'al kol Yisrael Ve'imru Ve'imru Amen Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'al kol Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'al kol Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Yase shalom, yase shalom Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Yase shalom, yase shalom Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom, shalom, shalom alechem Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom alechem Ebenu shalom, shalom, shalom alechem That was a sneak preview of the Cantorial concert, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're going to uh, walk over to unveil the sign in a, in a moment, and then we're going to ask the family, uh, the Shoham family, to please, before we go into the reception, to please gather around the ambulance so there could be a photo taken of that beautiful vehicle with the Ross Judger family, of course. Uh, the rabbi would like to lead us in a tikva before we head over to the sign. Cantor around the rabbi. <laughs> Kol <laughs> Sophia, oh, Lord, 
tik vatainu a tik vabat no dal baim li odam khovshi me anetsenu eretsion yerushalayim li odam khovshi me anetsenu Thank you, Cantor. And if you, those, please join us at the corner. We will now unveil the sign. Okay. Well, three, two, one. Carol <laughs> doesn't come down. There we go. All right, here we go.